What's up, Earth Signs? Welcome back to my channel. So I am going to be doing your elemental reading for the month of July 2020. If you would like to see your reading by zodiac signs, so one specifically for Cancer, or not Cancer, sorry, Capricorn, Virgo, and Taurus, go ahead and subscribe to my OnlyFans. Check that out. I'll leave it linked down below. You also get to learn tarot from me. It's only five bucks. It's a really cool deal. Um, but anyways, we are going to be talking about the month of July for you. So I just want to talk about some major events before I get into the tarot. So July 1st, I have Saturn going back into Capricorn. So Capricorn, um, y'all going to be feeling this month a lot, just so you know. July 5th, I have a lunar eclipse. July 12th, I have Mercury going direct. So Mercury is currently retrograde in Cancer right now. So again, Capricorn, that's on your axis. So y'all might be really feeling that one. Um, July 20, we have a new moon in Capricorn. So cats y'all got a lot of energy surrounding y'all all month all year y'all have had so much energy um and then july 22 leo season starts so that's kind of it for july i think every other planet is just still in retrograde and will stay retrograde till like august capricorn um uh, or not just Capricorn, but all the Earth signs, but specifically Capricorn, there's a lot of cardinal energy going on. So I feel like there is going to be like big urges for big changes going on. Like I don't think anything is going to be the same by the end of July for anybody. All right, guys. So now we're going to get into the tarot portion of this reading. So um, I'm going to be using archetype cards. So for archetype cards, or for this reading in particular, this is how I do my whole pot of tea reading. If you guys want to book a reading with me, that'll be like down below as well. Um, but yeah, this is how I do the whole pot of tea readings. So for this card, I want one card to fall. I really am trying to pinpoint where earth signs are at spiritually right now. And I have the bridge for you guys, um, which I think is a very beautiful archetype. So for the archetype cards, um, I do read the book definition because... Uh, the book definition is just so well written for this. So we're going to go to bridge. Here we go, 139. All right, 139. It says, the bridge, the connection, the link, the gate. It says, bridges are built to connect two worlds. They create flow, allowing us to travel between realms, ideologies, and personalities. This archetype is a gesture of acceptance, of saying yes rather than withdrawing, separating, and saying no. When we cross a bridge to an unknown land, we are led magically into new into a new reality. Ooh, I feel like that is you guys entering a new reality. We open up to otherness. Healing and communication are made possible. We enter a state of curiosity, wonder, and learning. The shaman, for example, creates the bridge between the everyday world and the sacred. This card asks us to study the connections between the seemingly disconnected parts of our life, relationships, ideologies, and histories. That gives me chills because... Capricorn, um, y'all are having Mercury going retrograde in your seventh house relationships. Um, Virgo, I think you guys have Mercury going retrograde in your eleventh house, so like your ideologies, your beliefs, um, your histories, and then um, Taurus, you have it going. Uh, you have uh, retrograde going down in your third house, which is like your immediate communities, um, and I feel like that also has to do a lot of with like um, just your environment and your past and your family so it's interesting that we have the word of histories here um but i get deeper into what each of that means um on only fans so check that out um but with this bridge archetype i think the thing that stuck out to me the most was earth signs entering a new reality okay i feel like y'all are going through it's it's a different type of portal for each of you but it's a portal nonetheless. I feel like Taurus, it's a portal that has to do with communication and what your hobbies are and, and, and your environment and your immediate community. And then for Virgo, I feel like it's more about like your higher self, what your morals are, what your beliefs are, what you truly want out of life. That's your portal. And then Capricorn, I feel like your, ver your portal is kind of like, you know, what it's almost like what is my purpose what is the purpose of these people like am i um with people that actually help me grow actually care about me like am i getting what i want from people because i give so much to everybody else those are your portals right now so i feel like this bridge archetype is very on point we are going to um pull some 
oracle cards next so the way i'm using these oracle cards is to see what energies are surrounding you right now um see what uh life themes um y'all might be dealing with as a collective and um see maybe what energies earth signs might have to embody i find it so interesting that y'all um are are so there's this there's this water energy here for earth signs and i think of like when water comes to earth it erodes when water gets mixed with the ground it's muddy when water comes uh, and, and water comes and replenishes earth so i almost feel this like this this what's the word i'm looking for like clarity not clarity but what is the word i'm looking for um um like clearing out but i'm looking for a specific word it's on the tip of my tongue and i can't pull it out but it's like water comes in and like purifies that's what i'm looking for purifies everything cleanses everything forces you guys to move forces y'all to change because earth is itself is like a stagnant energy think of a plant rooted in the ground it doesn't change unless fire comes and blows it over it doesn't change or or you know burns it down it doesn't change until wind comes and blows its leaves around and it doesn't change until water comes and erodes the soil or replenishes its roots so i feel like that is why you taurus in specific is so number one infected by its environment but earth too like in order for y'all to change y'all need help y'all need like external factors to push you to change so you might be finding water signs everywhere for y'all um i also or fire signs or or even air honestly but i'm feeling like a lot of mainly uh fire and water because air is kind of your friend air doesn't really move y'all too much I feel like you all might be surrounded by air signs and feeling like you've outgrown them for some of you. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and see what energies are surrounding y'all right now. Woohoo! Uh, you and... Alright, let's see. I was going to say you and the water signs, but it says choose wisely. So I'll get into this card later because I immediately got so many intuitive messages for that. Um, spiritual strength, beautiful. Solitude, look at all these nines. Um, spiritual union, beautiful. Oh my god, another seven. Deception and envy, so we have seven, seven. Another nine here. Um, material harvest, and then another two wow movement choices and decisions so seven nine and two um are your numbers earth signs and to get it more specific capricorn i feel like is the seven virgo is the nine and taurus is the two all right um let's go with this choose wisely card i kind of feel like this choose wisely card is kind of like y'all know there's gonna be a big change y'all know there's gonna be a pivot point and i think it's kind of like important to choose wisely what the direction is because whatever it is it becomes concrete now we have spiritual strength here and spiritual union honestly i feel like this spiritual union card is union within the self that's what's being worked towards right now and that's why spiritual strength is required because it's not easy balancing out the dualities within us um but i feel like especially with the solitude card here I feel like there is this deep, deep, oh, deep, <laughs> deeper understanding of the self that earth signs are like being, are, like it's being shedded on, like light is being shed to that. Like there's this deeper understanding of self that y'all are just getting clarity on. Um, I love this movement choices and decisions card because I feel like y'all, like I said, you have to choose wisely, right? Um, I feel like this movement choices and decisions card is kind of like a hint to choose the path that is growth. Choose the path where sky is the limit because you kind of have these two shadows like pointing towards those doors. So I kind of see it as like at the end of the day, if you're confused at what to do next with your life, ask yourself which is going to push you a little past your boundaries, sky's the limit, and which is going to help you grow, all right? And I feel like with this Choose Wisely card too, the answer is kind of like white right in front of you. And the reason why I say that is because you got gold birds moving towards the light. You got the light here. You got this person um, sitting right at the edge, again, body of water, and like there's a finger like pointing forward. So I almost feel like the, the right choice is one you know you want, but I feel like Virgo is constantly held back by its environment 
environment. So it's held back by people around them. It's held back by like financial issues. It's held back by like external forces. And I feel like that's going to be your biggest challenge. Um, again, I find it so interesting that here you are like at this end and then we have the archetype of the bridge. You see that? You, the bridge, new reality. You all just have to be brave enough to cross that bridge. Brave enough to make that move. And we have Mars entering Aries um, today. And Mars is right at home in Aries. So I feel like we're going to have this need for a big climatic change. I feel like it's going to be very dramatic this month, but we'll see. Deception and envy. Okay, this speaks a lot to, I feel like, the Capricorns. But Taurus and Virgo, yes. I feel like this deception and envy is... Someone around you who has ill intent, and I, damn, I just actually, this kind of reminded me of the Virgo reading, even though this card didn't pop up, so I actually think this card is very applicable to all three signs, but I kind of feel like there's this energy around you that is, it's almost like an uneven exchange of energy where the other energy has too much control over you. You've given too much power over it, and it has ill intent now. It doesn't serve you. It's envious. It's deception. It's, get rid of that. Get rid of that. Uh, material harvest. I feel like material harvest kind of means, Virgo, that y'all can really reap the rewards um, by like the end of this year. Like y'all can really kind of like, if you plant your seeds, you, you reap, like how do I say this? If you plant your seeds, like you watch it harvest, you watch it grow, you watch it manifest, you, you watch it come to fruition. I feel like whatever work you put in, it's coming back now, Virgo, and that's going to help you. I think it's going to help you break free from this deception, deceptive, controlling energy. I almost feel like if there are Virgos in relationships, that that other energy has, has too much power in the reconnection, and that's a huge issue. Let's go ahead and pull some Moonology cards. So I'm using Moonology cards to... Um, to kind of like see what direction spirit wants you to go in, what advice spirit might have. So this is how I do my whole pot of tea reading, by the way. I think I said that already. Probably did. <laughs> All right, so let's see what comes out. Is that it? Nope, there's one more. All right, so earth signs. Okay, so I have energy is gaining momentum, waxing moon. Things are picking up. Things are changing. All right. I have hold your vision, fixed moon. Oh, sorry. I dropped a card on the floor. Let me grab that. All right, so hold your vision, fixed moon. All right, so I feel like that's kind of like when you gain sight of what you want, do not lose sight of it ever again. I also feel like that means that whatever y'all do, all right, you retain. Like I said, whatever choices you make, it becomes concrete. So hold your vision so that way you make decisions that lead up to that. I have the end of a tough cycle approaches full moon in Capricorn. Okay, love that. End of a tough cycle, all right, guys? It's a light at the end of the tunnel. I have nothing is set in stone yet mutable moon. Again, with the water energy. I think that means things aren't finalized quite yet. But by the end of the month, I think they're going to start to begin to finalize. Um, but it kind of seems like right now, you got to let that water come in and, and, and purify things, all right? Kind of like let whatever towers that need to, that need to fall fall. Let whatever, you know, healing that needs to be done. Healing, it's almost like the wrapping up, okay? End of a tough cycle approaches. Nothing set in stone yet because we're wrapping up. Then when you cross the bridge, that's when things start to get set in stone. That's when those seeds are planted. I have work through your fears, new moon in Scorpio, all right? So work through your fears. And I feel like that's fear of change. I feel like that's fear of the unknown. Um, let's see if I'm picking up on anything else. Fear of change. Fear of the unknown, fear of attention. I don't know why. I think Cap or not Capricorns, but not just Capricorns. Capricorns, yes, but all the Earth signs. I think struggle with attention and privacy. So I feel like that's also that. And then I have adjustments are required. Third quarter moon. I kind of feels. I kind of feel like the third week of July is going to be really significant for the Earth signs. So let's actually get into the week to week and see what the what that's going to look like. All right. 
here's a week to week so I'm going to pull like two cards per week and also all of my cards I've made it so they're upright right so if they fall in reverse then that's just the way spirit intended the message okay but I want to give them a chance to all be the upright all right so let's see what's going on week one that death card is really sticking out to me because all those times I've shuffled it's been bottom deck so I have the Empress whoa whoa okay so these two cards fell together I'm going to keep them together when they fall in pairs I like to say that they're a, like I like to believe they're a pair so that's justice and nine of cups together all right so let's go ahead and try and pull for what's writing down the empress okay well these two fell in pairs again so I'm going to keep it there the emperor and eight of swords all right let's see if we can pull for the empress now there we go I have high priestess so that's your first week all right third week definitely is significant for y'all let's see what's going on fourth week that wanted to come out all right this came out instead so we have ten of swords wow oh wow seven of, seven of wands okay uh, this is an interesting interesting energy so let's talk about the first week I have the Empress with high priestess first week means or sorry Empress means um, you are in a position to kind of like create something new start something new birth something new high priestess is like the energy of a higher knowing of intuition so i kind of feel like you have this higher knowing you have this intuition you know what needs to be done first week is when you start your plans you're done contemplating you're done thinking about what to do first week is when it gets put into action second week i have nine of cups with um justice so this tells me earth signs there is a level of imbalance in y'all's lives okay a level of injustice and if you want to start this next chapter nine of cups to me let me explain is kind of like my gateway card because here we have the gatekeeper and you got to give the gatekeeper the tenth cup or you got to give the gatekeeper some keys you know what i mean there is it's not like you can just walk right through all right and i feel like that tenth cup is kind of like wrapping up this chapter by whatever imbalance that is by making it right again there is a wrong that needs to be made right or wrong that needs to be healed from all right and i think that's going to be key to what that big change is okay that's going on um and then we'll get into it because i see how this plays out for the rest of the month as well um i also want to note that like i feel like what's on the other side of this gate is everything you wanted everything you're trying to manifest everything you're working towards because nine of cup is also the wish card okay so i feel like it's kind of like if you want that wish if you want your dreams to come true if you want to be truly free if you want to be truly happy virgo you need to or not virgo damn okay well shout out virgo but y'all need to right that wrong balance the scale okay um i have the emperor here with the eight of swords so what this tells me is something that needs to be practiced um earth science is boundaries sitting in your power and like believing in your power i feel like that is the biggest thing for y'all y'all struggle so much with believing in your own power when in all reality y'all are some of the most steady and consistent and powerful energies out here you are earth you literally hold all the other energies in place you know what i mean all the other energies like are like nothing without you so I feel like it's important to kind of like body your power the third week. And I feel like the third week is significant because fourth week is is go time. Fourth week is um, when the big climax happens. And I feel like that's why we have adjustments going that need to be made the third week so they play out fourth week. Um, I kind of see that like whatever is keeping y'all stagnant, whatever is keeping y'all chained, whatever is keeping y'all blind, like you will eventually kind of like be be powerful enough or believe in yourself enough to 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 cut that off to make that right to take these blinds off to free yourself um i'm gonna move into the fourth week and then i'm gonna actually confirm all these guys so um with the seven of swords and the ten or sorry not seven of swords seven of rods and the ten of swords i'm kind of feeling that like 
like I said, fourth week is when y'all start to fight back. And I almost feel like a bit of underdog energy because no one expects the earth sign to, you know, be the one fighting back. Um, and I feel like what drives that is like some type of betrayal, some type of backstabbing moment, or some type of like just old memory brought back, or just some type of trigger that kind of makes y'all be like, you know what, fuck that. Like, I'm not taking anyone's crap anymore. I am not living in, you know, in concern with everyone else. Like, I'm going to start living for me. And I feel like that is kind of like the biggest change, because I feel like all year, earth signs have been tending to other people, or have been trying to keep things strong, trying to keep things steady as everything else falls apart. And I feel like July is when you're like, you know what, fuck it, it is my turn to like be chaotic and let things let things go. There's almost like this need, it's almost like you guys step into your own power, Emperor, and by stepping into your own power, you release control over everything else and that's when things can finally fall into place for you. So I'm going to confirm a couple things. Let's confirm the Empress and the High Priestess first. All right, Empress and High Priestess message being confirmed with a star. Oh my God, it literally just said like stars aligning, faded situations. So whatever you start off, whatever it is um, that, that sparks, it's almost like an inner flame that sparks within earth signs, that's a destined point in life. That's a destined change that's like I, whenever the star card comes in i think good luck i think support and i think stars aligning so let's see what this justice and nine of cups situation is all about okay i saw this card pop out earlier so one thing i think about the ten of swords is uh or sorry not ten of swords that's the ten of swords one thing i think about the nine of swords wow we have eight nine and ten by the way um is I think you all know what it is that is imbalanced. I think it's in your head a lot. I think it's giving you a lot of anxiety. I see y'all kind of like feeling really, really anxious, really, really depressed, really just in your head. And I feel like that is what needs to be taken care of before we officially start the next journey, before this third week, okay? We cannot be changed by that. We cannot let that give, you know, make us fearful. We cannot let that hold us back. We, we you cannot be small to that anymore i almost think there's this sense of earth signs where you shed your small self and you grow into the big self and that is going to be the biggest i think that's your gateway honestly beautiful let's see what's going on third week Ooh, seven of swords okay that gave me a lot of chills. Okay, so I feel like third week, y'all have this sense of clarity, of meant of just, not maybe not clarity, but I think you're going to get the clarity. And here's why. Because I don't say clarity yet because Eight of Swords, you know, blindfolded. But I feel like y'all kind of like start to see what around you has ill intent what around you is not right what around you is a bad energy i also feel like the seven of swords to me is like betrayal energy or energy that like is stealing or energy that it like gossips about you behind your back or energy that like um just has ill intent and i feel like that makes itself super known third week that's crazy Let's see what's going on fourth week. Okay, two cards fell. I want one card to confirm. So I'm going to keep going until the one card comes out. Okay, there's my one card. I'm going to go back to the third week in a second because that's super interesting. Okay, beautiful. So I have eight of pentacles confirming fourth week so i feel like this kind of means keep it pushing and job well done by you standing up for yourself and which is interesting that you have the seven of swords and the seven of rods so i feel like fourth week y'all stand up to the seven of swords energy you put it in check and i feel like eight of pentacles like it's kind of like keep doing that keep it moving job well done keep working on that i feel like it's almost like open your throat chakra to your emotions and speak about how you feel and and fight for how you feel do you know what i mean i feel like seven of swords like is an energy i think it's i feel like honestly for some 
especially those in relationships i feel like it, it is people um but i honestly feel like seven of swords energy is kind of more so environmental does that make sense like i feel like it's kind of like maybe that job that is like stressing you out and is toxic needs to go and you finally stand up to your boss or maybe it's like um it's stuff like that kind of like something that is toxic so maybe like let's say you're in school or something and you hate that program and that's toxic that you finally break free from it it's like that energy of like finally breaking free from something that is like does not come with good intentions or is not a place you can thrive or is not a person that is good for you so I feel like it's it's so different for each of y'all and that's why when I pulled this card I got slams with energy I was like it's a person it's a place it's a, this, this, this. It, it's so different for each of you but y'all break free from it like you guys do seven of swords stick back you, you stick up for yourself eight of pentacles like job well done keep going emperor like sitting in your power i really don't think anyone can fuck with y'all i think that's important to note like for all of july i feel like everyone like no one can fuck with you guys like you guys are just kind of like in in this defense mode like ready to just defend yourself ready to just get what's right to make things right all right, let's go ahead and read our confirmation cards. Also, I didn't mention this at the beginning, but at the end of this video, I am going to just do a quick little mini card pull and dice pull for for each of you individually. Okay, so, um, but let's go ahead and confirm our reading. Okay. Alright, Ten of Gabriel. Ooh, perspective. Wow. Wow! Okay. So I have eight of Michael. It says you can be free. Make a courageous choice to change your situation. Not seeing things clearly. Right? But y'all get the mental clarity. I have perspective. So it says there's a better way. Pause for reflection. Inside dare to be different. So again, you know, changing perspective. This is the only card that's like upright, but the image is upside down. So I feel like it's kind of like when y'all get that mental clarity and you change that perspective like y'all will know what to do i have 10 of gabriel it says ask your angels for helpful people to lighten your load working too many hours trying too hard to please others i think taurus got this card i feel like the universe especially with the star card here with destined moments i feel like it's definitely sending people your way that will help you especially career wise i feel like all of the earth signs kind of like get people sent to them this month that either help you with your career or help you make that big change or help you move or help you like kind of like improve or break free i have new beginnings so it's a starting a new life finding your purpose a forgiving compassionate review of the past i feel like that really confirms what i was saying about you know not, not letting the past hold you back and then on the chariot it says determination self-control career advancement acknowledge acknowledgement of success by others um chariot is also like the sign of cancer and I'm feeling lots of cancers around the earth signs right now because, like, all y'all really like cancers. Um, it's also cancer season. Um, I also feel like that confirms what I was saying about career advancement. Like, um, um, y'all kind of, like, having support in that sense. Especially for Taurus. In y'all's private readings, I talked a lot about, like, the attention y'all would get um, in the month of July. So that's super interesting. Let's go ahead and do the quick little individual card pulls. So I'm going to be pulling love cards and just like a tarot card, just like a private little, you know, message. We're going to start off with the Capricorn since the devil is the bottom deck right now. Um, so one card for Cap. I, I have the card of um, Six of Pentacles. All right. So let's go ahead and pull our love card and then i'll get to this message for capricorn i just want to see what's going on in the love department okay i have retreat <laughs> it says it's time to disconnect from the world they said no love life capricorn <laughs> all right so um six of pentacles i kind of feel like this is kind of like y'all strength and weakness 
I think it's kind of like you have such giving energy your axis is is cancer so y'all both have like this giving ass energy but i feel like it's now time to reflect on how much you actually receive back and whether or not that's fair or not so i think what's going to be focused on here is kind of like exchange and dynamic exchange in powers exchange in like even material goods how much you know are you sharing with the other person reflecting on that and i think that's why you got to retreat from your love life for a second because y'all need to figure that out so now I'm going to pull dice messages for you guys. So let's see. Let me get these dice out first. Okay. So dice messages. Ooh, I have four and seven. Um, so seven, I think, is the month of July. Four, I think, will be an important date. So maybe the 4th of July is going to be um, significant to you, Capricorn. Let's see what other charms come out. Ooh, four again. All right, four is a huge guiding number for you. And then I have 90 or six. Actually, it's a six. <laughs> so maybe um, July uh, 4th and 6th are important days. Let's see, 744 could be an important time. Anything else want to come out? Five. Interestingly enough, we have five, six, seven. Look at that. Oh, wow. We have four. Um, uh, I just missed it. Here we go. Fours. Five, six, and seven. So I kind of feel like what this means is sequence. I kind of feel like that means, like, again, with the star card, things are aligning. Things are going in order. So try to release control over things. Let it happen. Also, I think you need to release your um, expectations and attachments to how things might be or the outcome. Because I feel like a lot of things are going to be shocking to you. Like, they're not going to be how you thought they would. Okay? All right, Capricorn. So that was it for your reading. Thank you so much for checking this video out. Um, check my links out down below if y'all want to, like, subscribe to my OnlyFans or book a reading with me or follow me on Twitter. Um, let me know what you think of this reading. Comment down below what your signs are. I'm curious. And, yeah, don't forget to give this video a like and maybe a thumbs up. It helps me with the channel. And, yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video. What's up, Virgos? So welcome to your little individual card pull. So I'm going to be pulling one tarot card just to see kind of like what general message you have and one love card just to see kind of what the love department is like. I do love readings on my OnlyFans specifically for the Zodiac sign. So check out the link down below for that. Um, Ten of Cups. All right. Y'all put that. Y'all pull that in your private reading as well. So let's see what love card comes out. Ooh, I have stay optimistic about your love life. Positive thinking and faith will bring you romance. Okay, so Ten of Cups, I feel like, is, like, completion. It also is a family card. Um, I feel like for Virgos, y'all are in this position where um, if you're in relationships, they're either going to complete, come full circle, it's time to drop them and go, or they're going to level up into this level of family. Um, I feel like stay optimistic means either way, like, it was meant to go down how it was supposed to go down. Again, star card, things are aligning. Um... And I also feel like it means like good things are coming. You know what I mean? If one door closes, another opens. And if another door opens, well, then another door still opens. So, yeah, let's go ahead and pull some charms. I'm curious as to like what dates you guys get, times you guys get. So let's see what we have. Okay, so we have 11 as one of your numbers. Um, let's see. I have six as another one of your numbers. Let's see what else comes out. I feel like these are guiding numbers. I have four. Anything else want to come out? So I have 11, 6, and 4. I feel like, um, and 5. Ooh, wow. So I have 4, 5, 6. Interesting. So I feel like that is like sequence. Um, 7 is really sticking out to me a lot as well, even though we haven't pulled it. And I feel like that means like these are important days of July. So I feel like maybe, you know, July 4th, 5th, 6th um, through the 11th is going to be significant. Um, let's see what this last dice is. We have three. So, hey, three, four, five, six, sequence, stars aligning, things happening in order. That also happened to Capricorn, too. Um, so I feel like that is kind of like trust the process. Trust how things go down, okay? Um, 
And yeah, I guess that's it for your reading. Thank you so much for making it this far. Comment down below if you're a Virgo, Sun, Rising, Moon. I'm just curious. Don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe for more tarot readings and just like spiritual content and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, thanks so much for watching, Virgo. What's up, Taurus? Or welcome to your individual card pools. We're going to be pulling just a love card and a tarot card to kind of see just like what the T is here. Um, I do love readings per zodiac sign on my only fans so check the link out down below if you want to subscribe to that so you guys got temperance in reverse all right let's see what comes out in terms of love it says the situation includes marriage okay or involves marriage so let's talk about that um before i pull the charm so temperance in reverse taurus i feel like one thing that's really important is y'all need to work from a place of neutral we were talking about earlier how um the earth signs are kind of like um anxious or I, um actually might not have been talking about that in this reading i think i talked about it in your actual private reading on my only fans taurus that there's a level of like anxiety and anxiousness and you gotta bring that back to neutral um temperance in reverse let's talk about temperance when up when it's upright to me it always means like water energy is coming your way because of all of the water and like the cups kind of like flowing back and water back like water back and forth and that's because water teaches you how to be like free how to move unapologetically how to take shape and form and and but also still remain yourself still remain unchained and i kind of feel like that's going to be a big lesson for taurus um because you have temperance in reverse which kind of means like there's a lot of heaviness that we can't quite balance um and then I have wedding here, so the situation involves marriage. I kind of just feel like what this means is like connections that come in that last a long time. So it could be like maybe someone you meet like your lover and you get married. It could mean that you meet like a homie for life. It could mean that you're introduced just to something kind of like related to love that is a, that lasts okay and i also this could be an idea or an approach to love but for most i feel like it's a connection that comes in that just lasts wow okay so one of the dice fell and it's the card of two um i might just two fell but just to be fair i'm gonna throw it back in the pile if it's meant to come out it'll come out so i have 19 as the first um number and i really feel like that stands for uh, July 19th. I think that's a big day for Taurus. I have three here. So let's see what else comes out. One. Ooh, wow. I feel like these might be life path numbers. Eight. I feel like Scorpio. That makes me think of Scorpio energy, which is your sister sign. Um, let's see if anything else wants to come out. Um, ten. Ten. I feel like that means completion. All right, kind of like um, things coming full circle. That's kind of what the number 10 always means to me. And then I have six. So I kind of feel like this um, eight is Scorpio energy or your, or your sister sign. I feel like it's kind of important to pay attention to them. 10, I feel like, is representative, uh, represents completion. And then these, I think, are special days for you in July. So 19th, um, the 1st, the 3rd, and the 6th. So that first week of July is going to be super interesting for you, 1st, 3rd, and 6th. And then um, the 19th, I think, is right before our new moon. So I think that's going to be super interesting to you. All right, Taurus, so that was it for your reading. Thanks for making it this far. Comment down below what you think. Don't forget to give this video a like and maybe a thumbs up. It just helps a lot with the channel. And, yeah, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video.